Hey everybody, I'm sitting down with Tom Putnam, the director of United States of Insanity, which is a documentary about the insane clown posse and the whole battle basically for them to no longer be classified as a gang, a battle that I believe, unless something's changed very recently, is is still ongoing today. Anybody who listens to Horror Movie Night or One Hit Thunder knows that I have been down with the clown since Great Malenko uh, when I heard Halls of Illusion on the box and was like, I want to know more about these guys. So this was definitely something near and dear to my heart. Tom, are you also someone who was a fan of ICP beforehand or were you just kind of drawn to the idea of how can you classify a, a band as a gang? Um I, of course, knew about ICP before we made the film. Uh, I knew what kind of the average person knows, just the sort of like jokey press that tends to make fun of them or make fun of Juggalos. And my uh, Brenna Sanchez, who I directed the film with, was from Detroit, where the guys are from. And we just finished another movie in Detroit called Burn about Detroit firefighters. And we're looking for something equally as exciting to do next. And I didn't even know about the lawsuit. I, we'd read an article about where they were at in their life and called them up and said, hey, we think there might be an interesting documentary here. And they said, oh, we have a way more interesting documentary. Tomorrow we're going to announce we're suing the FBI. <laughs> so we like, and that's the opening scene in the movie. It's like we scrambled the crew together and got to the press conference and just... So, you know, here we are seven years later and it's like we've gone on tour with them and met so many juggalos and got home with the guys in the band and met their families and met people whose lives have been just totally turned upside down. And I'm actually really happy I didn't know that much about them because I didn't really have a whole lot of preconceptions. And, you know, had I heard about this lawsuit and not known what I know, it would have seemed like a joke. Yeah. But then, but then once you meet them and you talk to people who've lost custody of their kids, lost their jobs, are going to get kicked out of the military, getting get gang enhancements all because they have a poster on their wall or wearing a t-shirt or, you know, went to Hot Topic and bought a Hatchet Man charm. It's, um, it's just, I mean, to me, this is, it's a funny movie and it's a fun movie and it's an interesting movie, but it's also kind of a horror movie. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. And I think what I really liked about it was that it is it is very down the middle. You know, like there are multiple times in the documentary where I don't know what your opinion is. And I think that that's important in a documentary because I feel like so many documentaries you're overwhelmed by what the opinion is, but you really do play like you know, as much as I love ICP, I can also see why they might want to like why people might say hey we should classify these guys as a gang like and you bounce back and forth between like these stories of like two dudes running up at a dude and stabbing him with a with a knife and chopping him with an axe but you also bring hey, up let let's be clear it was a battle axe a battle axe this is true not just they a regular axe. head off <laughs> like yeah insane like it's insane stuff like that but you know the primary show that I do, Horror Movie Night, I'm watching it through the lens of like, yeah, people could make that same application to me loving horror movies. People could make that, you know, applying it to such a general thing is so dangerous. It's always a dangerous thing. Uh, but I think you did a great job of telling all the different sides of the story where you could see how someone who's uninformed and just searching on Google for information would be like we got to do it. We got to deal with these ju this juggalo problem, but also from like a if you're listening to the lyrics, it's like, hey, you can't listen to those lyrics and take those seriously. <laughs> like it's very tongue in cheek. Which is just like you know the movie I always talk about is Evil Dead. Like yeah. you could describe Evil Dead in a way that would make it sound like the most evil, horrible. Why would anybody watch this? But then you watch it and you see that it's fun. And it's a completely different experience. Um, it's yeah, the movie, the movie really was meant to reflect Brenna's and my journey to of sort of back and forth and going deeper. And sure, you spend time with the band and Juggalos, and then you talk to law enforcement, you get a slightly different perspective. And then you, you know, I think the movie ends with a pretty strong perspective. Oh, for sure. But but throughout that journey, I, I think that's the great way to describe it. You are on the journey with 
the two of you researching it. And I love that. Yeah. It, thank you. And it's, you know, you take a million of anybody, you're going to find not just some bad people, but some really dangerous, scary people. For and sure. Yeah, ju juggalos are no different, right? I, to me, the thing that was the most terrifying was this realization that some person, nobody still knows who in the FBI or in the government anywhere can just put your name on a list. And there's almost nothing you can do about it. You know, this, this can, this happened to a million people for being fans of a band, no court case, no criteria. The FBI has no published criteria for what makes a gang and it'll ruin your life. So like, what, what's just, what can an average person do if something like that happens or if this can happen to fans of a band, why not fans of another band or fans of horror movies or Raiders fans or Dodgers fans yeah. or any, any one of a number of things where, you know, you can look at, you saw the film, like you can see certain gangs wear Dodgers caps. That's the exact same criteria that got used for putting juggalos. Exactly. On I, the list. I kept thinking of um, the infamous EC comics case uh, in the fifties where sure. where you know they tried to make the statement of reading tales from the crypt comics makes you a juvenile delinquent and their evidence to it was well all the juvenile delinquents that we know read tales from the crypt comics and it's like yeah it's the most popular comic out right now so like every kid is reading tales from the crypt comics like that's not a strong enough case to like come to that conclusion and that's absolutely what's happening here too with the juggalo situations where it's like Yes, maybe people who are doing violent things gravitate towards horror movies and gravitate towards the music like IACP, but you also can't just say like, well, yeah, anybody who watches a horror movie or listens to Great Malenko is just going to go out and murder their neighbor with a hatchet. Like, it's absurd. Well, <laughs> but that's just, and that's just almost verbatim what the FBI said. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you go outside and you have a ICP t-shirt on, you're automatically considered a gang member. That's probable cause. A policeman can detain you, photograph you, put you in the gang database, and now you can't get a student loan, can't join the military. You'll get kicked out of the military if you're in there. You'll get a gang enhancement if you get arrested for something, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's just crazy. That's messed up, yeah. Um, and I mean, the, the other thing is that I don't know how – it sounds like, you know, you've – I don't know if you've gone to the gathering. No, but I was actually about to ask you about that because I I would say I'm a casual fan of <laughs> of the insane clown posse, and the gathering seems like one step too far for me. But well, I'm always fascinated by like American Juggalo was a great short film where someone just kind of walked around the gathering, and then seeing it in yours too is that such a wide tapestry of people. Oh my god, there's there's attorneys and doctors, <laughs> and and there's people that are like. I don't know. I don't know that I would want to like hand this guy my car keys. It's like every <laughs> type of every type of person is there, but you know what? No matter who they were, it was the most polite, please and thank you. I watched people give food, clothing, like let total strangers crash in their tent. Like we'd be carrying our gear and every single time a bunch of juggalos would run up like do you need help with that? you need help setting up your camera it was the nicest most polite most helpful group of people i've ever encountered in my life and you know we talked to the venue owner he was like the juggalos are, are the best the country music people are a nightmare and it's um it's part of what surprised us that i think you know the average person that goes and sees this movie that maybe doesn't know a lot about icp or has a negative view of juggalos now that people are finally seeing the movie after seven years it's cool to see how excited they are about the music and wow, maybe I'm a juggalo. Yeah. I'm going to go buy an album. It's and fun it's music. It's exciting. <laughs> it's just shut your brain off, have a good time, fun music. And like, sometimes that's all you really need. Uh, I, I have to quote one of the guys I, I I'm blanking on his name right now. He pops up pretty regularly in interviews, but he has a line where it's, I had to text it to a friend of mine. Who's also really into insane clown posse 
where he said, if liking bad music was a crime, then all of the parrot heads would be considered a gang. <laughs> and it's like such, that might be the best line in the doc. So I'm, I apologize for spoiling it. But that dude was on fire. Every time that he, I, I wish I could remember his name because every time he showed up, I knew I was about to have a belly laugh. He, he So that's uh, Jay Webb. That's Jason Weber, who was a super fan that then became their head of publicity. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, zingers left and right. When you're driving with him around the gathering and he's just like rambling on about the different people, I was like, this, I love this dude. This dude's great. He's Juggalos are fun, cool, funny people. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean... Is the gathering for everybody? Well, you know, just like the music, probably not. But <laughs> I, I can't, I can't think of a whole lot of times I had as much fun as I did there. And I've heard that from. I've had a lot of friends who are not the musicians you would imagine would be playing the gathering that have like played the gathering and have said the same thing, like, not really my thing, not really my type of audience. But man, did I have a great week! <laughs> like, it was kind of their response to it afterwards. So, I mean, it sounds like it's worth, it sounds like it's the same as I tell people that they all should do Comic-Con at least once. It seems like everyone should at least dip their toe into going to the gathering at least once in their life. Totally. Just, 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 just bring clothes that you don't, uh, get, that you're not going to need to wear again because you're going to get soaked with Fago <laughs> and be very sticky by right. the time it's over. All right. Well, I know that our time is running short. Tom, if people want to know more about this documentary where are they going to be able to see it because i believe i got a press release very recently that some some big things happened this week for you guys <laughs> yeah we uh the movie's going to premiere at fantastic fest but the screening sold out in at something like three minutes nice uh but it's opening on uh, as of today 643 theaters with fathom events on october 26th and uh tickets are going on sale i think tomorrow so unless you live on a deserted island somewhere it's probably going to be at a theater within a couple of minutes from anybody who's listening to this which we're pretty excited about are you doing anything cool with the fathom events i know sometimes there's like a, a cool little pre-show or post-show thing with the movie yes all there's right gonna, let, we've got a few surprises planned there's going to be some pretty cool people introducing the movie and then there's going to be a special never before seen uh concert after the movie uh, oh. with the band. So it's, it's going to be a good time. Well, I guess I'm going to have to see it twice now. I'm gonna <laughs> I'll have to go check out that Fathom event event as well. Uh, all right, awesome. everybody, I'm dropping this. I'm going to drop this on two different feeds, actually. I'm going to put this on the Horror Movie Night feed, and I'm going to put this on the One Hit Thunder feed. So, hey, guys, I'm simulcasting. Love it. Tomorrow, these tickets are going to be available. Go and book your tickets because sold out of Fantastic Fest in three minutes. Just imagine what it's going to do if you're living somewhere like Detroit. Make a move quickly because I don't think that these are going to be available very long for those tickets. Uh, Tom, thank you so much. And seriously, amazing doc. Loved it. Can't wait to see the next thing. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I uh, really appreciate you doing the interview. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.